This is the Mercedes AMG E53. It's the middle child in the E-Class range, and while middle children are often forgotten about, what I'm going to do today, thanks to the generosity of my friends at Mercedes-Benz of Milwaukee, is show you exactly why you'd be foolish to forget about this E53 AMG. We'll start where we usually do, and that's behind the wheel and under the skin. And it seems like these AMG light vehicles never really get the true respect that they deserve. And it's either because they're not hand built in a falter box by the AMG division, or it's because they're not V8s. But you know what V8s bring that this inline six doesn't? Wait. We'll get into this more as we talk about dynamics, but this E53 just feels a bit lighter, a bit sharper than its big V8 brother. The inline six is packing a twin scroll turbo along with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. There's a lot of engineering to cover there, but what you need to know is it makes 429 horsepower and 383 pound feet. All that power goes through <laughs> a Mercedes-Benz designed, engineered, and built nine speed speed shift automatic transmission. And it is really sharp. The downshifts are instantaneous. Listen to that. The upshifts are sharp and responsive. It's incredibly rewarding to shift these things. From there, power goes to all four wheels via Mercedes 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive system. And what that results in is zero to 60 in just barely over four seconds. No wasted traction is a benefit of all-wheel drive for launches, but this 4Matic system is packing the plus, which means depending on your mode selection, you can send all of the power to the rear if you want to get a little bit sideways. So yeah, to do skids, you need rear wheel drive and you need power, but it also helps to have a nice, taut and rigid chassis. It, let, it lets the car step out in a predictable way, AKA safely. Now, this is on the same platform as the W213 that came out in 2017. However, it's been revised. They've added uh, bracing, they've added rigidity in uh, bondings, adhesives, and they've added lightness. All of the suspension components are aluminum, and you also have a clutch-based uh, AMG-derived differential out back and what it results in is something that is way sharper than any mid-size luxury coupe or sedan should okay so that's a lot about the AMG-ness of this car but the other half of this is a Mercedes so it needs to be luxurious so let's talk about that and behind the wheel it is the interior is quiet the visibility is great and underneath you have sort of a two-piece air suspension You've got an air spring with an AMG shock, and long story short, that setup allows the car to tighten up and drive hard just as well as it can relax and cruise comfortably. At the end of the day then, this E53 has a shocking amount of personality, especially compared with other German mid-size luxury coupe slash sedans. And you just don't see that these days. What you have here is something that's inherently Mercedes, but with a big shot of AMG. It's sharp, it's dynamic, it's responsive when I want it to be, and it also can fade away into the background and take me from A to B in luxury and comfort when I need it to. So with that, let's step outside, and talk about a few important details. Okay, so, it seems like this, and the C43 too from what I've seen, gets a lot of conversation back and forth as to whether it's more Mercedes or more AMG, but the fact is, it's great at both. And if you ask me, I don't really care what you call it because you have a great balance of the Mercedes opulence and luxury with also having the sharpness and the aggressiveness and the sportiness of the AMG. Now, from the exterior, aesthetically, it's a Mercedes sedan, well, in this case, coupe. So it looks a lot like all the other Mercedes sedans and or coupes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it looks pretty good. It's got more, uh, more presence, I think, than you know something like a rival Audi or BMW. You have the AMG Panamerica grille up front here. You've got the AMG Power Dome hood. It looks very good. It's a long hood. It has a lot of presence up front. You've got LEDs up here. I think there's, I don't know what the number is, but there's a lot of LEDs and it can actually bend the light to help you see around corners, which is really, really cool. You've got a more aggressive front fascia down here because you have the night package and that's fantastic. Around the side here, you have 20 inch wheels wrapped in Pirelli P0 tires. They're a multi-spoke design. They're two-tone kind of uh, brushed aluminum and a black. 
and I think it fit the personality of the car really, really well. Over here on your front fender, you've got Turbo 4 Matic Plus, and we talked about that behind the wheel. The profile itself is incredibly simple, and I think that really lends itself to, I guess, kind of the upscale elegance that you would get or expect from a Mercedes. Now this, this is the coupe, which gets you this bit right here. See how there's no B pillar? And it just is kind of cool, especially in warm weather when you can have the windows down, it's just kind of cool. You're so exposed to the elements uh, and especially if you're in the back seat, which is big enough to fit adults, to, to not have this B pillar blocking your view is, is just kind of a cool thing that you don't really get in many other cars. Uh, none that I can really think of. Now, of course, you're probably wondering then about safety, if you know, whatever, but I've been to the Mercedes plant in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and the, trust me, safety is not a concern. This is a very rigid chassis. It's incredibly safe. They've gone to great measures to ensure that. But it is very simple design around back. The, the pearl that you get in the finish of the paint is very nice. It's a white Mercedes, and that's what you see a lot of. You see a lot of grays, blacks, uh, silvers, and whites. But the dimension that you get in this, especially when you're looking at it with polarized sunglasses, you really start to get a sense of like very much a pearl. And that's just really cool. You have this really subtle molded in lip spoiler off the back. Again, very elegant. You have the revised taillight design. It's not the crushed glass from a year or two ago, which I kind of liked, but it's still a very nice and handsome design. Of course, you've got your AMG badge, your E53 badge, and your uh, three-pointed star in the back. The three-pointed star is where you will push to open the trunk, and you have a good sized trunk back there. Your lower bumper here, of course, you have a black diffuser. It's very aggressive, uh, and you have quad tips. So with that, let's step inside and talk about what's going on in there. Okay, you know how I said behind the wheel that this thing had character? Well, it does inside too. When you're spending about $100,000 on a luxury car, you want to feel like you're getting a $100,000 experience. And you get that here from this E53, probably more than any other German competitor. The dash is dominated by two 12.3 inch digital screens for your gauge cluster and your infotainment. Those screens and the rest of the cabin are wrapped in a gorgeous mixture of leather, stitching, carbon fiber, aluminums, and essentially what it comes down to is something that's very elegant. You have these kind of like multi-drilled Burmester speaker covers that look really, really Gatsby, really, really high-end. It's very cool. You've got 64 color options for your ambient lighting, and it's done better than really anything else that I've, I've been in. Uh, the design is, is just basically amazing. It, de it definitely feels like you're getting your money's worth in here. The technology is very advanced. You're running uh, Mercedes-Benz UX, or user experience, so M bucks uh, for your infotainment, which you can control through the trackpad down in your center console. You can control on the right-hand side of your steering wheel, or you can touch the screen itself. The customizability in your infotainment system is, is basically unending, uh, which is great because you can tailor it to exactly how you want. Or if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, they have kind of pre programmed moods per se uh, and it's it's really nice because essentially you can go to something like performance which turns your gauge cluster all like yellow and red it puts you in sport mode uh, it puts your telemetry up on your infotainment and it, you know you get the most out of the car in that way in a shortcut way rather than having to go and set everything yourself or if you want something more relaxed you can go into quote lounge mode which will kind of split the two-tone of the uh, the ambient lighting so you get I think like a blue and a pink uh, and then it'll put you back into comfort mode and it'll soften the suspension so it really does a good job of kind of predicting what you would want and then of course the creature comforts that you're all expecting are things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto you've got wireless charging uh, you've got heated and cooled seats heated steering wheel but the nice thing is that they've integrated this technology really really well uh, you see a lot of manufacturers today putting everything in the screen um, just for kind of a cleaner dash design and Mercedes has done a really good job of finding a way to integrate the technology while also still giving you the hard buttons for things that you use most like your climate controls Overall, the design, it's, it's incredibly upscale, it's usable, it's comfortable, it's a nice place to spend time. Uh, and that's kind of the point, being kind of like a GT, coupe, sports sedan, luxury sedan kind of thing. It does everything really well, and you wanna be behind the wheel here. Now, of course, this being the coupe, uh, the rear seats are obviously less accessible than they would be in a sedan body style, but the rear seats themselves are actually large enough to have full grown adults back there. And they get things like ambient lighting and the Burmester speaker covers and some charging ports, and those those sort of luxuries that you can still get in the rear seat of a coupe so that's great to see but I think my favorite thing about the back seats is of course the B pillarlessness when you have the windows down it just gives you such a feeling of like open air and like freedom I guess you could say uh, without sounding cliche it's it is really really cool and something that you really don't get anywhere else um, so finally I think the last thing that we have to mention is the trunk and I think we mentioned it in the exterior but 
it is big. It's a very usable size. The opening is good, it's deep, and you can store a lot of stuff back there. So from an interior perspective at least, I'd rather be in this E-Class than the equivalent Audi or BMW. It just feels a little bit more special to me, but I think that's probably a good time to get into the final thoughts. The Mercedes AMG E53 is a luxury car with a wonderful and unique feeling character. It does the Mercedes opulence and luxury very well, but it also has a split personality of being incredibly sharp feeling when you want to drive it hard. At just about $100,000 as tested, it's one of the best bets out there for the money. So thanks again to my friends at Mercedes-Benz of Milwaukee and International Autos for making this video possible. I'll see you in the next one.